right. I'd like to bring this meeting to order, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming today. And the first thing we'd like to do is stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. And Mr. Timniak, if you could lead us in the sure. pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, next up. Quiet in the back. Is former first selectman Sherry Stenick and our pet of the month. We actually have three pets of the month. They were found in a box in Fairfield Center, and they're guinea pigs, and you can hear one of them squeaking, but this one has been remarkably quiet the entire time. This is, a, I would call this a starter pet. If you're not ready for a dog, this is a good one to start with. Low maintenance, pretty um, inexpensive, not a lot of food, so not a lot of exercise, you don't have to go running with it or anything, so it's a good thing to start with. Um, you know, the animal control takes care of, everybody thinks of the dogs and the cats, but I've seen pythons there. I've, we've had bunnies here before. We've had, there's the other two. We've had um, birds. There are all kinds of animals that they take care of, and um, it's probably easier when they don't have lots and lots of variety. So if you have, these are four weeks old, you have someone who might be interested in their own little guinea pig, please stop by One Road Highway. All right, right. Sherry. Thank you. It's still too too much maintenance. All right, Sherry. Thank you very much. And are you still undefeated? Has every pet been uh, so far? Fantastic. That for almost five years now, every pet Sherry's brought up here has been uh, adopted. So that's Excellent. great. All right. Next up. Uh, item four, the minutes. To consider and act upon the minutes of regular meeting of May 4th, 2016. May I have a motion to accept? I'll make a motion. And a second? I'll second it. Any uh, comments, changes, or edits to the minutes? Looks fine to me. Are we ready to vote? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. All right. Next up, here we go. Uh, special recognition for the McKinley Odyssey of the Mind team for winning third place in the state for Problem 5 Division 1. Okay. And if I could ask Coach Graceffa to come up and please fill us in a little, give us a little bit of background at the podium. All right. So my name is Suzanne Graceffa. I'm the coordinator of the Odyssey of the Mind team. I'm the coordinator of the Odyssey of the Mind for all of McKinley School and as well as a coach of Team SUP, is their name, <laughs> and, uh, which is the team that placed third. This year we were fortunate enough to place third in the state for our problem. Um, Odyssey of the Mind, for those of you that don't know, is a uh, program that was developed in the 1970s to help children develop creative thinking and problem solving skills. Each team selects one of five possible long-term problems that they work together to solve over the course of several months. Problem themes include building a structure from balsa wood, building a moving vehicle, and putting on a theatrical performance. The children must do everything from script writing to costumes to props to construction by themselves with no outside assistance from adults. Um, in addition to their long-term problem, teams are given a spontaneous problem the day of the competition. They only have three to five minutes to talk and think, and then they have to solve it and give their answers. This really tests their creativity and their ability to think on their feet. This year, our team selected one of the two performance problems. The title of it was Fins, Fur, Feathers, and Friends. Their play had to have at least three animal characters, including at least one mammal, one fish, and one bird. The characters had to solve three problems, encounter a mystery door, then they each had to guess where they thought the mystery door led, and then find out where it led. And then they had to write and perform a song and a dance. So um, our team chose for their theme the North Pole. Their characters were a polar bear, a stingray, a penguin, a pink walrus, a rainbow horned norwal, an elf, and Santa Claus. Um, they decided for their mystery door they would actually build an igloo, which they built out of uh, recycled milk gallon milk jugs. Um, and they actually were able to crawl through it. It was big enough for them to go through. 
And then once they crawled through their igloo, they found themselves trapped in a snow globe, which they made out of um, a coat rack, a sheet, and a mattress cover. Wow. So um, I'm very proud of my team. While placing third was a great accomplishment, I was most proud of their perseverance when the igloo had problems standing up, which was took a couple weeks for us to get that to work. Um, their creativity in making the snow globe and their teamwork all year long. I think they did a great job. That was very impressive, guys. Very impressive. I'm both, you know, one part jealous because we didn't get to do that when I was a kid. So I'm, um, but I'm also in awe of your ability to be able to do that and think that quickly on your feet and do it in teamwork, which is one of those skills that's extremely important throughout your entire life. And I'm, I'm thrilled that they're learning it at this early age. Okay. Uh, let me ask my colleagues, do you have any uh, follow-up comments? You didn't bring comments? a picture, did you? I didn't. I should have. Okay. It was Amazing. impressive, though. Their igloo was about this big. It was, I, how, many igloo, how many milk cartons did we use? Did you have to drink the milk? <laughs> did you have to drink the milk first? We sent out flyers to all the teachers, okay. and they gave us some milk. Okay. Good. Excellent. So right. Congratulations. Yeah, Thank you. Terrific. Okay. Nice right. job. So we have uh, some medallions and some certificates for each of you. So let's, uh, let's come out and hand these out. I'm not quite how to do this with everybody, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't find those again. Yeah, those, that's good. Chris, do you want to hand these out? Sure. Okay. Okay. We're going to ask you to come up and get your certificate, and then we want to shake your hand and show you how proud we are. On behalf of the town of Fairfield, we want to say congratulations <laughs> and thank you for being leaders in this program and demonstrating how smart Fairfield kids are. So, first up, Olive Campbell. Congratulations. And don't go away. Just stay up here. We'll get to stand right over here. <laughs> so who's next? Lindsay Fahey. Hi, Lindsay. Congratulations. Uh, Lindsay Fahey. Andrew Fuller. So the Omer Award is something that they don't always give out. Um, they gave one to Lily this year. She arrived with her mom very early in the morning. And Lucy, sit down, please. Lucy. Um, and, um, you know, most kids might sulk at 7 in the morning having to be dragged to volunteer. But she jumped right in and asked what she could do. She greeted people. So they felt like she went above and beyond and uh, showed teamwork. And so for that, they give her a special award. Wow. 
Invite them in generally. Yes, We're going out together. We're going out together. These guys are really good. The PTA uh, reflections, the work guys are phenomenal. We need a bigger boat. Lisa. Oh, there you are. All right. All right. So next item on our agenda is the PTA statewide reflection student contest winners. And Lisa Havey, I know you have something to do with this. Can you fill us in a little bit? Um, this much to do with it. It's the kids in the groups that are really great. Um, my name is Lisa Havey. I am the State PTA Reflections Chair. I also sit on the board and I am um, in the Fairfield County Region is my support group or I support the Fairfield County Region. Um, really quick, the Reflections program provides opportunities for students to create works of art for fun and recognition as well as outlets for students to be creative and explore what they are learning in the classroom. The PTA Reflections program is run by parent volunteers, thereby providing another avenue for opportunities to involve parents in their children's education. Participation in the PTA Reflections program gives students a chance to experiment in the arts. When children express themselves through words, pictures, music, dance, film, and other art media, 
They grow intellectually. They learn to analyze their thoughts and feelings and enjoy what they like to do best. So um, I turn it over to. Yep, that's all. Any, Thank um, you. Uh, any comments from my colleagues on the board? I would just say congratulations. Thanks for everybody coming today. I'm very proud to come from Fairfield. Fairfield's my home spot. I'm a, I'm a Fairfield PTA mom, soccer mom, rugby mom, music mom. I wear lots of hats here. Fairfield, you guys, just so you know, have the largest participation in the Reflections program in the state of Connecticut. It is, it is talked about. It is celebrated. And it was really exciting this year to see that we even had a National Merit Award um, winner. So. Um, there's a lot to be proud of and there's a lot to be excited about and a lot to look forward to. So, thank you. Continue on this path. Yes, yes. Next year we will move to a larger room. Yep. I just, I had a chance to see some of the, um, I'm going to say works of art. They covered a, uh, a range of, from art to music to dance uh, uh, to... Uh, multimedia. The, multimedia. Uh, I was so very impressed with what our kids were able to do. And, and again, for, for those of you who may hear that back in the old days how great it was, uh, back in the old days we couldn't do anything close to what you guys have accomplished. I am just so impressed with that. So we've got a few certificates up here. And so let's see if we can try this again. Please come up and get your certificate and let us personally congratulate you. Emma Bud. Emma, you're here. Mike, her reflections representative is. I just heard from the back. Do you want to come up and Lisa, why don't I why don't we hand the ones that aren't here to you and you can get them? Yep, I can do that. Thanks. <laughs> Congratulations. I need a clap back. I don't know. Yeah. We're working on it. We're working on it. Alexander Cunningham. Yay! Uh, Tobin Gutman. All right, Tobin. Ashley 
Governor McCabe. Kendall McCormick. Katie Owens. Uh, Vivian Petreca. Carly Rebish. Yeah. 
Ah, all right. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right. Bye. Thank you. That's cleared out a little bit. Bye. All right. Continue on. Uh, item eight. Uh, we have a resignation from the Board of Finance, Robert Stone, Democrat, 122 Inwood Road. For his term was 1113 to 1119, and his re resignation date was May 31st. Um, we could ask somebody to uh, just ask them to be a little quiet out in the hall. That would be great. I'm talking ice cream. Um, no. I Uh, next up, first selectman appointments. This is for information only to the Conservation Commi Commission. Uh, Jennifer Halhuth, uh, Democrat, 1260 Merritt Street for a term of 1114 to 1119. Now, this is as an alternate, and that's to fill a vacancy for Raymond Ponslot, who resigned. And the appointment date was May 27, 2016. Uh, and then, may I have a motion to... Uh, take two items out of order, items 11 and 12. I will make a motion to take right. items 11 and 12 out of order. Thank you. I will second, second. that. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, thank you. Mr. Barnhart, I think that brings you to the fore. Thank you for your consideration. Uh, the first item, uh, if I may, or? Mm -hmm. Go right ahead. Uh -huh. uh, is uh, the neighborhood well, assistance. Hold it. Let me, uh, let's take that up first. Let's, uh, may I have a motion to hear, consider, and act upon the following resolution is recommended by the Director of Community and Economic Development. Resolved that the, applic the applications received under the Neighborhood Assistance Act NAA program are hereby approved and that the Director of Community and Economic Development is hereby designated as the Municipal Liaison for the Town of Fairfield for this program. May I have a motion to accept? I'll make the motion. A second? I'll second it. All right. The floor is yours, Mr. Barnhart. Thank you. This is a state program that uh, has run for many years that provides a state tax credit uh, to corporations that provide donations to approved municipal agencies and community nonprofit groups that apply under the program. There's no town funding involved. The town's obligations are limited to um, deciding to participate in the program, obviously, and then accepting applications, conducting a public hearing, which we did last evening, and then having the legislative body of the town the RTM approve the applications that are received and then they get forwarded to uh, the Department of Revenue Services for their consideration. We received eight applications in, in advance of the application deadline of April 25th. They were provided uh, to all of you um, and there's a summary provided on our, on our website, on the town's website as well. Um, again, we would ask for your consideration and approve all of these so that they can be um, considered by the RTM at their meeting in June, and they'd have to be forwarded to DRS for their consideration by the July 1st deadline. I'd be happy to entertain any questions you have. Any questions from the board? Mark, this is a program that we pretty much do every year. Yes. Participate in. For how many years now? Oh, uh, at, least a, at least a dozen. Yeah. And as I remember, a uh, number of the, the not-for-profits are able to get some significant donations. This past year, they received um, collectively about $50,000 in donations from, from corporations that then apply for a uh, corporate tax credit from the state. And so really, the role of the town is literally just helping them get to the donations. To facilitate it. No yep. cost to the town. Correct. Uh, and it's a way for companies to participate, make a donation, and get a tax credit to help pay for that. Right. It's really a win-win all the way around. All right. Any questions from the board? No. Yes. On the, um, it says, uh, on the sheet with the eight, it yes. says other funds. What's that column which says, it says funds request and then other funds? Yeah. The application indicates uh, if there are any uh, other local funds. Um, primarily from their own sources. So they t they're, al they're allowed to designate, uh, provide a budget that indicates what the total cost of the program is. These are from other funds not attributable to the NAA grant that they're seeking. So they're not coming from any town sources. It's typically from their own sources. It's, it's kind of all other revenue. Right? Yes, exactly. So if they raise it on their own. I got you.
not okay to go to the public. Yeah. Any comments from the public? Seeing none, we're back to the board. Are we ready to vote? Yes. Ready? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, that takes that one. Uh, item 12, also from the Community uh, and Economic Development, is to hear, consider, and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the Director of Community and Economic Development. Resolved that the program year 42, which is October 1st, 2016 through September 30th, 2017, Community B Development Block Grant, CDBG, is hereby approved in the amount of $480,500, which includes entitlement grant funds of $468,93 and program income of $12,407. And further resolved that Michael C. Tetro, first selectman of the town of Fairfield, be and hereby is authorized to execute any and all necessary documents to facilitate the town's participation in said CDBG program. I have a motion to accept. I'll make a motion. All right, a second? I'll second. All right, that item is before us. Mr. Barnhart, could you fill us in on this component? Sure. This, too, will be referred to the RTM uh, with your, your approval, of course. Uh, the town receives uh, funds each year from the federal government through the Department of Housing and Urban Development under the Community Development Block Grant Program. Um, this year we're, we expect to receive $468,093 in CDBG funding. Uh, we're allowed to, uh, the town, towns that participate in this program do have some discretion in terms of how they allocate those funds. It does need to meet a national objective and be eligible for funding under the CDBG program. Um, in addition to that, we can only allocate uh, up to 15 percent of our total grant uh, towards what are called public service activities and 20 percent towards general program administration cost. Uh, we typically allocate the maximum in each of those categories and then allocate the rest in accordance with our um, uh, five-year consolidated plan in the areas of affordable housing and public facilities non-housing needs. Uh, the allocations are presented uh, to you, um, and again, uh, this would then, with your approval, go to the uh, RTM for its consideration at their June meeting. I'd be happy to accept any questions you have. Now, this again is another program that uh, it looks like we see every year. Yes. How many years have we participated in? At that? least 42. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's basically the town, because of the uh, its size, population, and other uh, criteria has been an entitlement community and participate in this program since its inception in, in the mid-1970s. And simply, this appears to be just guidelines in terms of how we hand out the federal grant. We, we make the determination as to how we allocate those funds. It does need to meet those broad criteria in terms of meeting a national objective. Um, those, there are three national objectives, one of which is it, uh, the one that most often applies to the town like Fairfield is that it serves uh, populations or areas of low to moderate income. The other criteria generally do not apply addressing conditions of urban, addressing conditions of urban blight or decay. Uh, we fortunately don't have that issue or problem here uh, in Fairfield. The other one is to meet an urgent need, which is typically after a natural man-made disaster. Um, again, that has very limited application. So most of our uh, if not all of our programs apply under the first category, which is meeting a uh, need uh, from a low moderate income population or area of low moderate income. Right. And it's your department that kind of manage, manages we do. and we, administers the grant? The town basically serves as a fiduciary for these funds, so we do make sub-grants to these uh, various organizations, for example, the public service activities. Most of these I think you're probably familiar with. They've received funding through this program for many years. Uh, we, we serve as a fiduciary and make sure that they um, meet the criteria for participation. They, they honor the other regulatory requirements of participation in the program. Um, and that's, uh, that's the extent of our, our role, yes. Okay. Any further questions from the board? So with the like administration cost, the 20% here, that goes to your department to they, help you manage? Yes. All of these other it basically funds one staff position and benefits as well as other costs that would not fall under the category of providing direct uh, service, um, uh, providing direct service to a, an eligible activity or program. Uh, 
Is this what we usually get? Four hundred six, four hundred. It's a little bit. Yeah, it's it's about a two percent increase over the current year. So it's pretty much been level funding for the last five or six years. Um, it was this from the state of Connecticut. It's from the federal government. The federal from, government from right. Washington. Uh, all right. Is this list you have put together here? Is this a final list of what? what this you're is the doing? proposed allocation. Yes, we had a series of public hearings in accordance with our citizen participation plan, the first of which was to solicit applications and uh, get some understanding of public needs. Uh, we did that early in the process and we had a second public hearing this past uh, yesterday actually to get comment on the proposed allocations. Can you briefly describe the Lake Mohegan demolition yeah. project? I'd be happy to. <laughs> sure. This is actually an application being presented by our conservation department. Uh, they're proposing to take down a blighted uh, structure, which was the old headquarters of the Lake, uh, the Mohegan Valley uh, quarry operation that's at, uh, at Lake Mohegan Park. It's boarded up. Mm -hmm. um, so they're asking for funds to take it down. They feel that it's a uh, hazardous condition and it's obviously blighted. It's, it's, uh, and so uh, they requested funds of the program. This would probably fall into that category of a spot blight condition and so that would be the national objective that would be met by that project okay so it's got nothing to do with the beach facility there it has nothing to do with the beach okay. facility <laughs> yeah. and thank you for asking <laughs> what's the micro enterprise assistance for many years now we've provided small grants to um, small businesses, microenterprise is a defined term. It means a, a business entity that employs less than five, fewer than five people. Uh, so for many years now, we've provided small business grants to eligible microenterprises to encourage them to either start or expand their business in Fairfield. Uh, we provide up to $5,000 in matching grant funds to cover things like tenant fit up costs, equipment purchase and the like. Um, and so we're happy to do that. We typically see anywhere from uh, two to five applications each year. Was there any, any ap applications for senior citizens which got uh, rejected or didn't make the list or anything like that? Because I'm looking at the list. I'm, ho I'm just hoping to see a little bit more, maybe. The only. Uh, the only uh, application that we've been talking with uh, the senior services director about is renovations to the kitchen facility at uh, the senior center. The, the, there are a couple issues there, one of which is the building itself is situated in a floodplain, which, and part of our requirement here is uh, because of uh, their federal resources, we'd have to do an environmental, a fairly yeah. diligent environmental compliance application with that. And just for the amount of money that's involved, it's probably not worth uh, the, the effort unless you have other funds set aside. She wasn't proposing to fund the whole thing out of CDBG, nor could we. The other aspect is we, we're under, um, we have a timeliness standard that we have to meet each year. So um, we have to, we can't keep a, a, a pot of money unspent uh, as of August 1st. And so if projects, and we're having this issue right now because we approved a number of capital projects this year with the thinking that they would move faster, they weren't fully designed or even bid. And so when we don't have a project that's even in the design phases, it's difficult for us to allocate funds for it at this point because it really would jeopardize uh, federal funds if we don't meet that timeliness. Standard. Can you reallocate the money if you don't meet the timeline to something else? We can, and that's what we're trying to do now. We're trying to shift money around. But what we prefer to do is actually advance the design so it's at a point where it can be successfully bid. We've identified other funding sources to cover the balance and then go forward. And then CDBG funds typically are there to fill a gap. Yeah. Uh, but again, we're going to have to address an environmental issue, which, um, you know, that's been a problem in the past in terms of allocating funds to do uh, work at the senior center. Now, we could do public service activities. We've done other things in the past that serve a senior population. We have some programs here that do that as well. Um, but, you know, that's a different category. Can you use block grant money for town matches for other grants? We can if the if the grant that we're applying for doesn't prohibit that. So we have and, and we can do that. It just depends on the project. For example, we're looking at using 
uh, the streets and sidewalks money that we've allocated here we're looking at doing the local portion of sidewalk improvements over in the Commerce Drive Kings Highway area that are not funded through a federal state grant uh, that would be subject to other other criteria so some of the local streets that are not state highways for example we would look to do this with CDBG money instead it's not a formal match but we have used uh, CDBG to match other transportation dollars in the past, so it's it's permissible. All right, so I guess my last question would be: Is if there's money left over, can you roll it into a nonprofit the town's already vetted and uh, basically addressed as a, a nonprofit in need? We're willing to support if there's. Left it's over subject to again, depending on uh, capital projects. We don't have um, as much of an issue if they're ready to go go to construction shovel ready, so mm -hmm. to speak. Uh, public service activities were subject to a 15% cap, and that's where a lot of nonprofits right, okay. typically apply for. So we can't go over that 15% number. We can move money around, but we can't. That 15% is a hard cap. That's the only, you know, that's a limitation in terms of what discretion we have. Can we send some of this money if it's left over to like the, what we voted on last week, the Burr Mansion development? Well, actually, we have money in the Burr Mansion this year. Already um, block grant money in? Already block grant money to address. So one of the things that we can use block grant funds for is to address um, barriers to accessibility for persons that are mobility impaired or have other handicaps or disabilities. So we can make buildings more accessible to persons with disabilities, and that's what we're doing at Burr. We've done it here in this building and at Old Town Hall. And we'll do it at Sun Tavern Victorian Cottage as well. So public facilities that are there there are barriers to accessibility for folks with disability, that's definitely an eligible activity. We'd look to program those funds. Can we take any money which is left over and create pickleball courts? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see. Yeah, that's I think I think that's a lead into our next <laughs> next agenda. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right. Yeah, all right. Um, any comments from the public? I back to the, that. Back <laughs> to the board. Any other uh, questions or comments from the board? No. Ready to vote? Yes. All in favor? Aye. All right, Mr. Barnhart, thank, thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. Thank you very much. All right, now back to our agenda in sequence. Item number 10, which is Bigelow Center for Senior Activities. To hear a report from the Bigelow Center for Senior Activities on the center's pickleball program. All right. Please come up to the podium and introduce yourselves. Um, I'm Betsy Hume, and I am being accompanied, accompanied by Marianne Charmou. And between the two of us, we coordinate the pickleball program for the town of Fairfield. So first of all, thank you very much for having us tonight. I'm going to address the Bigelow Center, where pickleball is thriving. Pickleball as a sport is the fastest growing sport here in the country at this time. From Arizona to Florida and California to Maine, and, and no matter where you're traveling to, you can always find a pickleball game. So Fairfield is right in the thick of it, and we're doing very, very well in that regard. At the Bigelow Center, we currently have over 120 registered players, and that does not include the drop-in folks who um, come in on sort of a drop-in basis. We are run the program four days a week with Saturdays depending upon where we are in the summer or the fall schedule. And in that time, we focus on instructional time for beginners. We focus on social play, where everybody of all levels of ability get to join and be social and um, share the game with each other and their skills. And then at the end of the day, the, we break out more by skill levels where it's a little bit more competitive. So we've really tried to balance the instruction with the levels of play and, and what people are trying to get out of the sport. Some are there just for recreation and meeting their friends, getting a little of exercise, while others of us are there for that as well as really trying to improve and take it beyond. What precipitated our being here this evening is about two weeks ago, uh, the state of Connecticut ran the Connecticut Masters Games for pickleball. These were held up at the high school in New Britain. We had 17 people participating from the Bigelow Center. Um, eight people came home with either a gold, silver, or bronze medal. Wow, congratulations. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, very proud of us. <laughs> yeah. 
So I think we are really doing a nice balance of levels of play and interest. Um, we certainly are recognized by many other towns from Greenwich to Ridgefield. We have friends come down from Old Lyme, um, other towns in Connecticut. So our pickleball program is certainly recognized and, and respected. Mary Ann, I've also done three sessions for the town in terms of con continuing ed. And that's again just getting the word out there, get people playing. And Mary Ann can talk in terms of her ambassador role, what else is going on. The Pickleball Association in the United States actually has an ambassador program, which is a volunteer program, and I'm the ambassador for Fairfield, and I try to promote the game and get anybody and everybody interested in playing. The Bigelow Center, of course, is just for seniors, but pickleball is for every age group. You can get families involved, and it's just easy to learn and a lot of fun. So Betsy and I are putting together some free clinics this summer over at the Ludlow Courts, and we're advertising it for the, to the entire town of Fairfield to get people to come and try it as a family. It's really, really fun. So as an ambassador, besides that, there is a way to go on the USAPA site, and if you're traveling through town or say you're going to go to a particular town for a vacation and you want to play pickleball, you can go on that site and the ambassadors will be listed there and they will tell you what time and where you can play on their courts in their particular town. So it's really fantastic. Every time my husband and I travel, we look up who the ambassador is and find out uh, where we can play when we travel. And the paddles are so easy to pack in your suitcase and the balls are great They're too. only about seven and a half ounces so it's much lighter than a paddle tennis racket or a tennis racket. Tennis racket. Um, we have an older woman Connie whom we love and she's in her early mid 90s mm -hmm. who plays at the Bigelow Center. Mm -hmm. uh, she's not dashing and running but she can take a few steps here and there and she can still whack the ball. Absolutely. Um, in the middle schools here in Fairfield they teach pickleball as part of the phys ed curriculum. So the word is getting out. And uh, Jerry Lombardo. He's been fantastic. He's been so supportive. Uh, Jerry is director of Parks and Rec? Yes, yes, that's correct. That's correct. And so we've been working with him because we really want some designated pickleball courts, not just to play on a tennis court, but to have our own pickleball courts mm -hmm. here in Fairfield. And he is getting this job done. So we are thrilled about that. Do you need a net like you do in tennis? You do. It's a smaller net. It's a little okay. shorter, and it's not as long. And um, yeah. And where do you do it? At the senior center. You do it in the gym. In the gym. That's right. Yes. We have two court. dedicated courts in the gym at right. the Bigelow Center. Um, last year, Jerry took all but the high school and the Dwight School tennis courts and adapted them for pickleball. So the pickleball lines are painted on all of these other outdoor tennis courts. So currently, we will reserve courts at Tomlinson or Veterans Park. And we know to look for the pickleball lines, which are just, it's a smaller court. Okay. But the net's the same height? Or it should be, the should tennis be a little net lower. should be lowered down two inches. So very often what? we'll bring a bungee cord and just put it on there Pull and it just down lower the net a little bit. Yeah. But getting our We're own adaptable. dedicated ones will be terrific. Right. And, and down the road, we'd like to have a town-wide pickleball tournament, gearing it for beginners and intermediate players. Yeah. Like fun. So it is. Good. Have you Bird. tried it? No, I haven't. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch for those clinics this yes, summer. Yes, please do. Please now, do. how many years have you been? Has it been played at the senior center? Now? This is the third year. It started in 2012. 2012. So this has grown really 13. fast. 13. 13. 13. This has grown really fast. Very yes. quickly. Yes. We have players coming from many other towns. I have been concerned that I wanted to make sure that we had more Fairfield residents than non-residents. Uh, we can go to any other town and play there as well, but I just want to keep it a healthy balance for the Fairfield residents. Yes, please. Sense, yeah. uh, where do you want to put the courts? Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, so there's there's one single tennis court. You can put up to four pickleball courts on one tennis court. And there is one tennis court off of... It's uh, Tunks' Hill. Tunks' Hill, but it's... Villa and Melville. Villa and Melville. Yeah. Right. So uh, Jerry is, a, is thinking that we would be able to put our four pickleball courts on that particular court. So tennis would not be available on that court, but you could just drive down the road to Owen Fish Park, which is not far from there, and there's a tennis court there as well. Right. So, yep. Hmm. Gotcha. Very it's good. pretty exciting. Very good. 
Any awesome. more questions from the, from the board? No. No, it's great. Right. Yeah, Just very congratulations on everything you're doing. It's great to see the competition pick up and, and how well we're doing at the state level. So thank you yes. for your part. Well, yes. Thank you very welcome. much. We enjoy it, and, and we know we have fun. support with you all. Who we really yes. We'll be watching. That. We'll be watching. Okay. okay. Right. Thank Bye you very now. much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. It's there. And then next up is item 13 from the fiscal officer. Jen, do we know where Bob is? Okay, why don't you go, why don't we pause for a moment? Jerry, we're going to pause for a moment and let uh, our CFO join us here. Okay. All right, then. Now that we're back, uh, item 13, which is to hear, consider, and act upon the following resolution as recommended by the Chief Fiscal Officer. Resolved that Michael C. Tetro, for selectman of the Town of Fairfield, be and hereby is authorized to act on behalf of the Town, and in his sole discretion to negotiate, approve, and make the offer of settlement of the Town, attached hereto to the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. In connection with the investigation conducted by the Commission, and in this connection, the aforementioned First Selectman be and hereby he is authorized to undertake such actions as he may deem necessary and advisable, including the execution of such documentation as may be required by the Commission in order to carry out the foregoing. Mr. Mayor, that sounds a little, kind of, well, first of all, may I have a motion to accept? Make a motion. A second? I'll second it. And Mr. Mayor, could you step us through that because that seemed a little convoluted reading that. Yeah, this was uh, last, uh, Presented to the Board of Finance uh, on November 25th, 2014. So it has Board of Finance or Board of Selectmen? Board of Selectmen. Thank you. Um, and so it's had a life. There's been a lot of work involved and discussions. Uh, so based on background, the municipalities who sell bonds are required to file their financial statements with the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, within eight months after the end of each fiscal year. The pre-2010 filings were made through a system called NERSMA, or National Recognized Municipal Securities Information Repository, which was developed and made available to, to the municipalities by the Municipal Securities Rate Making Board. Uh, NERSMA was primarily for uh, underwriters, friendly, transparent, easy to use by underwriters, uh, and uh, a little bit difficult for towns. Uh, and then in 2010, the uh, Municipal Securities Ranking Board upgraded it to a new system, EMA, the Electronic Municipal Market Access, which if you're from the, familiar with the corporate world, is similar to the corporate uh, filing system, EDGAR. Uh, these systems are created for the purpose of making full financial information uh, information of any investment vehicle uh, by available to bond investors of anybody issuing an investment vehicle, whether it be a bond or a stock. But obviously, in the case of municipalities, it's a bond. The town of Fairfield failed to file their financial statements with these bodies in a in a timely manner from 2005 to 2010. The 2005 through 2009 filings were materially late. The latest one was four, year, four years, 10 months late. Uh, one of the, the last one, uh, 2009, was a year late. The 2010 filing was only 21 days late. In 2011, the town, uh, March 2011, the town caught up with all its past due filings. So that's the first part of the background. Second part, in addition to filing with the SEC repository, municipalities, when issuing public debt, must disclose certain financial, economic, and demographic data and legal and other information in the town's official statement. You've all seen that, right? The book that we send out when we, when we issue our bonds. These requirements call for the town to disclose its requirement, excuse me, to disclose its compliance 
with all SEC filing requirements. The town's official statements issued with bonds from two, uh, through 2010 had the following st statement in it, in them. Quote, town, the town has not failed to meet any of its undertakings as to continuing disclosure. Obviously, that was an inaccurate, a misstatement in our official statements because we had not filed. In the 2011 and 2012 official statements, the town made the same statements followed by except for failure to file the fiscal year 2010 and 2011 statements prior to March 21, 2011. The town at that time failed to include the information that it also filed financial statements late for the fiscal years 2005 to 2008, so the town's official statements were still not completely corrected. The SEC deemed these disclosures as material misstatements. In 2014, the Division of Enforcement of the SEC implemented its Municipal Continuing Disclosure Cooperation Initiative. The purpose of the initiative was to encourage underwriters and issuers, to, the town being the issuer, of course, to self-report any material misstates misstatements contained in any of its official statements over the previous five years. Three underwriters, Fidelity, William F. Blair, and J.P. Morgan, self-reported on our issues. The Board of Selectmen, with the knowledge of this information that the underwriters had already self-reported, resolved in the meeting of November 25, 2017, that well, the town- November 25th, what year? 2014, thank you, thank I'm you. sorry that the town also self-report. <coughs> Given the SE look back, it's limited to five years, the town's official statements that were officially deemed to be material and misstated are those issued from the July 23, 2010 through the July 11, 2012 filings. Before you today is a resolution, so, Backing up a little bit, so after the uh, we self-reported, there were discussions with myself, with Bond Council, with SEC, and uh, the result of all that is before you today is a resolution to accept the offer of settlement that the SEC has offered us. The offer requires the town to one within 180 days of the order to establish written policies and procedures and appropriate training regarding continuing disclosure ob obligations to affect compliance. The 180 days would officially begin after the order is entered, which if the Board of Selectmen uh, passes this resolution today, would probably be sometime the end of this month to mid-July. Second, within 180 days of the entry of the order, the town be would be comply with existing continuing disclosure undertakings. We've already accomplished that. We did that in 2013, actually. Thirdly, we would disclose settlement, the terms of the settlement, in any finan official financial statements for, for up to f for five years. Fourthly, we would certify, document, and file evidence of compliance with the above three items with the SEC. And, for, and fifthly, we would cooperate with any subsequent <coughs> investigation by the division regarding false statements and or material omissions. In anticipation of your thoughts, I have three comments. One, I don't believe these misstatements caused any financial harm to the town with regard to the realized interest rates of any of the bond offerings the town has issued. Secondly, very clearly, we have reporting requirements, we have documentation <coughs> requirements, but the town has not been assessed any financial penalties. And thirdly, other than some work for the finance department, no harm to the town has been done. Okay, if, could you um, give us some background as to how this kind of came to be and how we discovered it? And, and obviously some of this took place, actually all of it took place before you took over as CFO. So you may not have personal out, but give us some, how did you come across this? What generated this? 
the, as I mentioned earlier, the, the initial, uh, initial, I don't know if that's the right term, the, uh, the National Recognized Missile Securities Information Repository uh, was primarily built for users, for, for the underwriters. But it was where there were, there was actually five companies, private companies that contracted with the SEC that collected the information and the information was then distributed by whichever one of those five you filed with, okay, and to each, to each other. So people could look on all five, any of the five, to get theoretically complete information, and also was dumped into an SEC database. Um, why or how or how come the town did not, I, I of course have no idea. When the town switched to EMMA in 2010, EMMA was a much more, it's a much cleaner, more efficient system and it's, it's uh, easier for town people to use. Uh, and you don't have to pay to use it, you had to pay to use the, the prior system. It's, it's now a quasi-governmental uh, organization that, that may develop and maintain the system as opposed to private enterprise. Uh, so it would have become apparent because Emma was loaded with all the prior data, you know, with history. So I assume it became apparent when the town first, and Emma had, a, there was a lot of publicity about Emma. So you know, when Emma was introduced, I'm, I'm sure the auditors, I'm sure everybody said, okay, we've got to go switch to Emma. How do we use Emma? Because it was a brand new thing. So I can only speculate that when the first filings were made to Emma, that people saw in the history that these other filings hadn't been made because uh, that was 2010, because all the, the catch-up filings were all made in March of 11. So, and then, then now, were there many towns like this, lots of towns like this? Why did SEC put together initiative? I mean, we're not the only one. Uh, and, uh, and when the town, as I tried to explain, when we did correct our, initially, if you remember, we, did, we hadn't filed, but we stated we did in our official statements. Then we stated that we did, with the exception of years 10 and 11, for some reason, somehow the town missed that it also not filed earlier. And I don't know how that happened. We caught all that up and corrected the information in our official statements with the 2013 uh, bond offering official statement. And, and then you have, you I mentioned. I think is actually, J.P. Morgan that uh, I think uh, called us and said, hey, Mayor. Well, they didn't say, hey, Mayor. <laughs> you mentioned in your comments that you had uh, reviewed this with Bond Council. Are they 100% uh, comfortable with our approach on this and what we're doing going forward? Absolutely. And Absolutely. have you covered this with our auditor? Uh, no. It's on my list to do to inform him after you guys vote for this. Okay. All right. Sorry. Any questions from my colleagues? I was going to ask about bond council. When we were issuing, did like they didn't back check or go review all the paperwork before? I mean, I know we're going back to two thousand six, seven, eight, nine. Actually, two thousand five. I think he said. Mm -hmm. Right. So two thousand five yeah. was the first year. I'm saying the following year when we would have issued the next time, they didn't catch that. And the, yeah, the, the, the official statement uh, is produced by the town. Obviously, bond council and the financial advisor have significant input in helping develop the document. No question about that. Uh, primary input, actually. But I would have to uh, assume that yeah, they, didn't. They, anticipated, they thought that the town was properly, because it did up through 2005, and then, it's, and then didn't. In the so uh, my other question, there's no financial settlement involved in this. It's all operational and guideline based from the SEC on how we're to operate moving forward. Correct. Uh, is there any notations or anything made in anything we're going to basically in have our, in our any checks statements. against us which are going to occur because of this being placed there? Um, as like a warning if we do it again or we miss or make a mistake along this, you know, uh, we've already had like one strike against us type. Well, well first of all, we're not going to do it again. 
right, right, okay. Yeah. But second of all, no. I mean, it's uh, we're complying. Uh, everybody's in agreement. This is, it's, a, it's an excellent settlement offer, actually. I mean, basically, yeah. we have to do some documentation, uh, file disclosure for the next five years in our official statements, and, and that's pretty much They're it. They're essentially asking us just to do it the correct way. Correct. With no financial penalty correct. for what happened in the correct. past. Any um, communication with the rating agencies on this point, or, or will they need to be notified before our next review with them? This has no impact, if any, with the rating agencies. Yeah. All right, what type of training is involved, and who's involved in that training? We'll put together, I'll work with Bond Council, we'll put together some documentation, accounting policy, and that. And we'll just kind of, which will list the, the disclosure requirements, you know, have some steps in there that you'll check for, you know, it'll check the databases every so often for, for new information, for edits, for amendments, and that we'll look at it before we issue the official statement. Be pretty straightforward. Do we have, like, checks and balances in place going forward to make sure that, like, I don't know who's supposed to file these things? It would be the CFO. Me. So whoever was here before or whatever. But then do the bond council people look at that or there's no, I mean. It yeah, we'll probably develop a checklist to, to with every, that will go with every bond. I mean, there is a checklist. We'll be adding to the checklist, double check with it, yes. Right. Who wrote the settlement? Did the town write it or did the SEC write it? SEC. Okay. Has the town attorney reviewed it? No. It's bond, bond, bond council has reviewed it. Yeah, that's yes, because it would be bond council that would we would ask to review it. Okay. I assumed you meant lesser by. I did. Attorney. That's yeah, who no, I was it's thinking. Not, it's not his expertise. It's okay. not his skill set. So we, which firm? Uh, Pullman? Pullman. Pullman Common. Common. They've reviewed it. They've tweaked language. They've made it to protect the town. It's it's. it's I mean, it's, it's white bread and milk toast. All right, any further questions from the board? I, know, I guess I just would feel better having more time to digest this and really look at it. Um, just make sure there's nothing, I mean, it's a lot to take in in just a, a day, you know, looking at it yesterday, getting it just before the long weekend, it's, there hasn't really been time to have full conversations in the next. I mean, this has made it clearer, obviously, yeah. but. Is there any time crunch on this? If we were to look at this for, uh, have it come up on the next agenda, is there any, is there any real issue? I'd like to get it done. I tried to get it before the body last meeting, but with everything else going on, I didn't get a time, time to do that. Um, it, it's, I mean, there's really nothing there and uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear if you turn to page three, I think, in this offer settlement. I guess it's just the kind of thing like going for, you know, it would have been nice, like you've been working on it, and maybe we could have been part of the discussion just to know that it was going on, kind of get up to speed, and then see the final version, because it's been going. Yeah, I guess I would agree with that. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, you said that, um, was this all written by the SEC? There's been back and forth between bond counts and SEC, but it's pretty much written by SEC. Do you have any concerns? I don't I just because bond council has been intimately and that those are the people yeah. we would look to and I wouldn't try to out lawyer bond council right no I wouldn't either so that's not my expertise. my concern my concern was the the big three for me were bond council the auditor and the rating agencies and, and uh, if the auditor's going to get this and it's basically you know we're going to disclose it right that's really what the auditor is yeah. worried about is are we disclosing things mm -hmm. so that right. covers that uh, rating agencies, it doesn't change our financial position at all. Uh, and in fact, the rating agencies have probably seen this before if, if we're not the only town right. that's been across this. Um, 
Yeah, they, they wouldn't have had the self disclosure and if we did it if we were dealing with that. Okay, uh, a couple things. One, if there was a financial settlement in here, I would probably, I would, I would certainly ask to have this tabled while I could look at it and review and try to compare it to other towns. That being said, there's no financial settlement in here. Moving forward, when something like this is coming up and you've obviously been working on it for 14 years, you have a new board of selectmen. Well, not 14 years. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, not 14 years. 14 months worth. For, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, a years. Since it was last in front of the in November of 2014. 14, right, that's what I meant to say. You know, this would have been something I would have liked uh, a briefing on or an update, uh, knowing that you did try to get this in front of us here. Uh, created sort of, um, you know, w uh, questions about what is this, what are we going to be voting on today. There was a lot of uh, back and forth we had trying to figure out uh, where we're going with this. Uh, so. I would say in the future, if there's anything outstanding like this, which is currently on the table, I wouldn't mind scheduling a, a time with you, Bob, to schedule a briefing on this so that we don't have a surprise. We are not scrambling uh, before, because you know, I guess my intention was to, to table this, if certainly if there was a financial aspect to, to this. But it all appears to be operational. It appears to be just doing it the right way, which is nice of the SEC to not essentially drop the hammer or come down hard, uh, basically, uh, you know, file things the appropriate way. I do recognize that I, I'm sure other towns across the state of Connecticut uh, probably had this happen to them. Probably the country. Yeah, across the whole country right. uh, through this. So um, uh, that being said, I, I, I'm comfortable voting, voting on this tonight. Thank you. I think your point's well taken, though. I think an update to the board uh, would have been appropriate to give a heads up that this was coming so that we're all aware of that. Do you have any further comments? No, nothing in addition to what I, that's been said. I'm good. Okay. Are, you, um, are you comfortable or would you, do you feel strong? That yeah, no, I'm, okay. I'm comfortable based on everything that I've been told. I guess it's just the thought that if there's anything here that we haven't really been told, or that... I tell everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, is based there another... the information that we have, I guess. Yeah. Would there be another stop or another person we could send this to? Uh, maybe could we get a, a letter this week from Bond Council um, recommending that we do this, that they've looked at it? Um, you can take my word, Bond Council recommends. Okay. All right. All right. No, I'm okay. Okay. All right. Any comments from the public? Seeing none, back to the board. Any further thoughts or comments? No. All right. Ready to vote? Yep. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Could you just um, any further of the comments? Yep. Any further steps in this process? Um. We will we will uh, file the resolution tomorrow. You'll sign it. We'll file it tomorrow. Um, then we'll communicate back and forth a little bit bond with uh, with bond council. Well, with bond council and the SEC, we'll probably get an order entry at the end of the month, and then we have the 180 days to to uh, complete our uh, you know our written policies and procedures, which we will then file. And, and then they may or may not comment on that, depending upon how comprehensive and complete they are. And then we'll adjust to and correct and change amend based upon their comments. So this is going to be going on for well, we'll we will we will get. We're going to it's not going to take us 180 days. We'll probably have our filing done in maybe 60 days. Okay. I just I again as the board kind of indicator request could you please update this board on any communication coming back and also on key milestones that are going forward so we know that we're getting those steps completed if that's okay with my comments that's exactly what I was gonna ask you I have one is this doc is what we have in here and this is final there's gonna be no alterations that's to a it correct statement. this is what you're submitting okay. correct uh, and if there is you're gonna come back a change then you guys didn't vote for it okay all right okay and you'll keep us posted going totally. forward. So Thank with you. my apologies, I understand your questions. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
That's item 13. Item 14 is the tax collector. We have something there? Yes. To consider an act of uh, tax refunds in the, as recommended by the tax collector in the amount recommended. May I have a motion to accept? No, I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Second. All right, the item is before us. Any amendments? Yes, I'd like to make a, an amendment. Uh, to remove the period at the end of the sentence and add a comma followed by the amount of $8,041.27, period. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. The item, Chris, you in favor? Yes. Okay. Aye. The item as amended is before us. Uh, any further discussion? No. All in Aye. favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. Uh, next up, to hear, consider, and act upon any other business which shall properly come before this meeting. Any other business? Um, yes, can we can we schedule an update uh, on, a, I guess, a couple things we have outstanding? Maybe um, one of the things I want to hear about is the asphalt recycling down at the uh, transfer station on what's going on there. Um, I've had a couple conversations I, I'd like like to ask some questions in regards to that and where we stand about that going down. I did come up during the budget season, uh, and I know efforts were being made to reduce the size, so I'm wondering if we can schedule that um, for uh, either the next meeting or the following meeting, one of the two. Uh, there's going to be a meeting with the neighborhood group in the latter part of June, I think, uh, June 20-something. Not 28th. Okay. Uh, so perhaps we do it the first meeting in July, so we have the update from the neighborhood at that point. Okay. Also. Um, and then I had another issue um, which I wanted to discuss at some point regarding the Penfield Pavilion, the retaining wall, which was taken out. Mm -hmm. If we can get an update on, on what's going on and with that and where that decision was made to, to pull that out and who was notified. I think, okay. Okay. Yeah, that one would probably be better sooner rather than later. Maybe the next meeting. All right, we'll take a look at that. Anything else? No, I didn't have anything else. All right. May I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye.